previously on the dragon ship i want to go back further than that if we can and, and start doing some reviews and get your guys opinions on what you thought was important in 2022 but one thing i saw in 2022 is the rise of what i call the new manosphereans now in my opinion nobody really understands where this red pill really came from there was a lot of early guys that were out there but for some of those really old guys that have been there for a long time it's kind of interesting to see people like you know guys on on i, I love adam sosnick i got to meet him in miami and they just don't fully understand where all this came from. You know, it came about in the early 2000s. And there was a lot of guys that were dancing around it. And really, there were four, maybe five, really six, let's say, really, really prominent men that were all talking in and around this pickup culture. I'll say culture, but it really wasn't that. It was really men sharing notes on the old BBs, the bulletin boards, and such like that. And what the prominent men were, were blog writers, and we can go right to uh, the original four R's of what we call now the Red Pill or the Manosphere, uh, primarily being Rolo Tomasi. You know, his inspirations and his work on Chateau Hartiste as a moderator is pretty impressive. And then, of course, there was Ryan Stone, uh, a relatively young guy compared to me, but he was very prolific as a writer on the Married Red Pill. You know, there's some other guys out there in addition to him that were kind of influential on the red pill, the married red pill on the reddits. Uh, so, but Ryan's definitely one of the four, you know, and then you got to take a look at uh, Roosh, uh, what Roosh was able to accomplish out of the uh, uh, PUA things with his books was pretty damn amazing. Now you can say that he kind of ran his ship or his cigarette uh, boat right into the rocks at full stream into the Jesus pill. I think there was some, some things missing in his life. And with the, his, he was one of the first to get canceled off Amazon. They banned his books. Uh, and it was really based around um, a show he did with Dr. Oz where he was really attacked and set up. And unfortunately he fell right into that bear trap. I think it really did affect him. And he wasn't able to really adjust that which is unfortunate his writings about conversations and being able to converse openly with people was with some of the best writings out there that's extremely practical his books on on uh, talking to people i know it's a bad title it was called day bang super amazing he really capped into what old people do when they can talk to anybody and tell stories you ever hear an old man game they can talk to a rock right he really defined that and he put down the techniques on how to accomplish that, which really opens the door for someone to be social if they've never been social before. And with practice, you get really good. And then there was, of course, Rossi, you know, uh, who disappeared from the Internet. Uh, and then you had on the periphery with the religious side of the red pill, you had Dalrock. Of course, I think, Glenn, you're familiar with Dalrock now. He's no longer writing. I think his site is um, archived. But really important, this is really where it came from. I'm sure I've left some folks out. There was Blue Pill Professor. There was, uh, you know, Apple K, uh, things like that that were really prominent. And then, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Pook. I don't know if anybody's heard of Pook, but there was a book written called The Book of Pook. Probably one of the first. It was before The Rational Mail. And it's written kind of in... It's kind of written in pieces in a strange way. Like, is it had anybody read Aesop's fables? It's like this old, this old Greek philosopher talking to a young, impressionable young man trying to learn the ins and the outs of, of life and the meaning of life and the meaning of relationships with women and how it works and all of that sort of thing. And uh, so that's a really fascinating read, you know, right there at the cusp. And, and then just as those guys were getting hot and heavy, in the late 2000s, you had like a prominent comedian like Patrice O'Neill, which I talked about with uh, MLD John today. Uh, Patrice O'Neill kind of gave the comedic voice to many of these truths in such a way. And it was so shocking that he rose to stardom very, very quickly.